This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. I kind of had this idea, what would you do, say for instance, in a hypothetical world, you could get every piece of gear that you've ever bought, you could get exactly what you paid for it back, would you buy much of that gear back again? How much of it would you actually buy back again? I was kind of spurred onto this thought by a couple of things, of course Keith from 5 Volt World, his kind of tagline is the most music from the least gear. The kind of idea around sort of a more minimal approach, um, we were kind of talking a little bit about whether we we're kind of collectors or, or not. And yeah, and then the other thought was around sort of the, the experience that I had where I had a Sire Larry Carlton L7 and I was actually really happy with that guitar as a Les Paul shaped instrument. I went down the rabbit hole of buying a couple of Gibsons, um, experiencing lots of different Les Pauls, uh, even buying a custom shop which quickly got returned. I never actually featured that on the channel. Um, and then coming back this morning to, to the Larry Carlton L7 and thinking actually this journey would have been just fine here. And you know, as someone who is taking part in gear tube and stuff like that, of course a bunch of this stuff I think is interesting because it brings people to hear for to hear how these things sound. For me personally, it's been interesting to try a bunch of different bits of gear but what it's really shown me over the years as well as someone who's bought loads of gear is that actually there's quite a small amount of stuff that I'd be actually super happy if I just had that and if I could swap a bunch of this back for money and pay off a mortgage with it I probably would do that and, and maybe that's a, a realization you can only come to by spending quite a lot of money on gear um, now, bear in mind that actually most of the money that I spent on this gear was at a time when I was less well off than now. So I bought a bunch of amps, for example, through lockdown. Um, and this gear has kind of accrued over many, many years rather than it being something that I just went out and spent loads of money one day. So with all that in mind, guitar wise, a Strat, probably with K-Line on the headstock, would be pretty much all I need. Now, I did do this video before um, it was out of focus, so I thought I'd probably better do it again. With this um, being kind of the main focal point of it, now this has been my number one strat. I've kind of put it in the cupboard for a while because I've been playing it so much that the frets are getting a little bit worn again. The action on that is actually a little bit low for me at the moment, and I kind of re-recorded the intro using this, which is, again, another K-Line Springfield. But maybe two K-Line Springfields could probably get me through most of the jobs I would ever need to do. I could totally gig these and be totally happy. Um, and if I wanted to pick something up for inspiration, it would be one of these anyway. Uh, so that kind of covers the guitars, basically. So any other guitar that you've seen on this channel, be it a Gibson Les Paul, be it a Gibson ES-165, I think if I was really going to pin down whether or not I need a jazz guitar, 
the answer is definitely no. I don't really make much money from playing jazz anymore. And even when I did, I didn't. And I think actually playing jazz on a Strat is a perfectly reasonable proposition. Uh, so that would leave me essentially with two Strats and a bunch of money that I could pay off a mortgage with. Uh, obviously, I have more than two Strats. I have quite a few K-Line Springfields, which is a, a luxury. Um, but I also have some kind of other guitars which are superfluous. They don't get played too much. Would I buy them again in this hypothetical? I don't think necessarily I would. I'd probably experiment with some other stuff instead. I might have a Telecaster. That might be one extra thing. Uh, you know, the Tokai ES335 that I have totally kind of killed ES335 gas for me. So that could be a good bet, but not loads of guitars. Then kind of on the amps thing, I'd be happy with just this one matchless lightning clone from Rift, which is hand wired. I got that for £150, kind of a fun story on that one. But I've had loads of amps. I bought a load through lockdown. Uh, obviously, that was a dumb time to buy amps, given that I wasn't going to gig them. Um, and yeah, what I found is that actually amps, probably just having one amp that you can crank through a load box or whatever is perfectly reasonable. Um, I've got a, a two rock here which you can buy if you w want because I'd be happy to sell some of this stuff. I've got a Fender Pro Reverb from 1965. That's kind of cool and a nice kind of antique piece, but I can't really gig that because it's too heavy. Um, a Mezzabugi 1x12 cab with an EV speaker would totally be fine for me um, with that head. I'd be totally happy with just that. Uh, in the modeling world, I'd go with the HX Stomp because that's what I use pretty much every day. And if I've got all this spare money over because I've saved a bunch, something like the Axefex 3 or the FM9, something which you can really dig super deep into the modeling thing if you want to, would make sense for me. Um, I wouldn't get a Kemper or something like that because I wouldn't have any amps particularly to capture. Then the pedal world is one which would really... I started off with a lot of pedals. I now don't have many pedals at all. And I think what I've come to realize is that there's a few pedals that I'd quite like in my collection and they're not very expensive. So something like the Boss Blues Driver, the Marshall Governor, something like those two, and you can get them in one pedal with a Boss Angry Driver, which is, incidentally is on my live board. So that would be one pedal that I'd definitely keep. On my pedal as well, I've got uh, Keith from Firewatt World. I've got his Bus, um, which is the David Barber signature pedal, which is basically a blues breaker on one side and a Dumble ODS type thing on the other side. Um, and my Lifeboid also has an HX Stomp on for the delays. I don't think I'd go for buying any of these delays particularly again, not, you know, not as a need. And yeah, on my board as well, I have a Keely Tone workstation, but that's not really for much other than the fact that it has a compressor, a tube screamer and a blues breaker in kind of one enclosure, like it does a lot for, you know, not much real estate. Um, so that's really a kind of a convenience choice rather than uh, a something I need to have. So that's kind of one that is negotiable. Um, whether there's any other pedal, I don't use fuzz pedals generally, so I don't think I'd need one of them. A Ditto Looper might be there. There's not a lot, <laughs> there's not a lot when I think about this personally. I don't know if you're the same, but I basically would, kind of convert a lot of this gear back to cash if I could I, th I think it's what I've come to realize which is kind of uh I don't know I feel like part of what gear tube about is about is about having lots of tube amps behind you and loads of pedals and stuff like that that is one thing I see a lot of I don't feel like that particularly jives with me particularly well I feel like having a bit less um but a few key pieces that are actually part of what makes you sound like you which you can't really get away from anyway, but um, makes more sense to me rather than huge kind of shelves and shelves of, of pedals and stuff. So that's my experience. I've gradually started kind of pairing things back again um, because I've just found that there's a lot of stuff that I'm not really using and don't really need, doesn't really fulfill a massive purpose. That's just me personally. I don't know if you feel like that at all. But I thought it was an interesting hypothetical. If you could convert it all back to cash and just buy back what you would buy back, what would you do? Uh, is there much stuff that you keep or is it a small amount like me? I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments if you have them. Maybe you've done this. Um, I've, I've certainly sold a bunch of stuff recently that I never, never really thought I'd sell. 
um, and generally don't miss it. I don't miss a single amp that I've sold. Um, do I miss certain guitars? Not really. Uh, do I miss pedals? Definitely not. So, yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. There's a rap pedal that I've been using a little bit recently too. But yeah, that's, that's just me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you've got them. Mm -hmm.